At this time, I'd like to bring aboard the senior member, uh, Captain Jim Long, who is a native of Pennsylvania. He attended Franklin and Marshall College, a graduate degree in physics, received his wings in 1950, accumulated 172 carrier landings. After uh, getting out of the Navy, uh, the reserves, he was an engineer for Martin Marietta Corporation, and he's been a docent here for 12, 13 years since uh, 2000. Captain Jim Long. Okay, Dale, thanks. Uh, I graduated from high school in 1946, which meant I missed World War II by one year. I was wanting to be an Air Force pilot, and I always thought the Navy pilots were, they were too good. But the Navy came along right after I graduated and had a program where they said, if you go through these wickets, we'll take you to college for two years and then send you to flight training. And I thought, wow, I, I could do that. And so I did all the steps were needed and I got approval from my parents and went off to college. And in 1948, showed up in Pensacola and went through flight training. In advanced training, the, uh, the plane I luckily got to fly in was the Bearcat. And it became my favorite airplane over here. We don't have one. Oh, that's not a Bearcat. You saw one earlier. That's me on the flight deck in an SNJ during carrier calls during basic training at Pensacola. So I flew the Bearcat in, a, in advanced training and for a couple of months in the, in the uh, Navy, active Navy at Jacksonville. And then I got assigned to an F9F squadron. And I thought, wow, this is really something. This was the first Navy jet built of any quantity after World War II. And I had a fighter squad, I was in a fighter squad in a, at uh, Oceana, Virginia, VF-21. And in that squadron, we made three deployments to the Mediterranean. Now we had, my buddies were flying in the Pacific, flying the Korean War, and we were showing the flag in the Mediterranean and uh, having a great time. So it was kind of a, a, a tough situation, but I happened to be in the Mediterranean and uh, my, my girlfriend, now my wife, lived in Philadelphia, so it all kind of made sense. After uh, I was in the squadron for three years, I went to Pensacola and I was an instructor, flying the SNJs as an instructor at Pensacola. Uh, I did that for a year and then I said, I think I'm going to resign and get out, went back to college, and then got in the reserves. And I flew for another 20 years in the reserves, and that's when I made captain, flying all sorts of different airplanes. The FGA was one, the S2F was another one, and uh, in 1970, I got promoted to captain. And at that point, I couldn't find any flying billets in the reserves anymore. So I said, I think I'll go be a FAA instructor. So I became a flight instructor. And for 40 years, I flew people, taught people to fly out of uh, Denver, Colorado, and out of all the airports around here. And in my lifetime, I helped 128 people get either a private ticket or uh, it's instrument tickets or commercial tickets or airline transport pilot ratings. And uh, in my time, I've flown over 11,000 hours. I have never ejected. I had two actual engine failures in the civilian life. And I obviously lived through both of those. And uh, so I am what they call an old pilot. In the world of aviation, we have old pilots and you got bold pilots. But you have no old, bold pilots. Which says, I wasn't bold, but I am old. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Jim.